Tatsu is a 170 foot, 62 mile per hour flying coaster located at Six Flags Motion Mountain in California. Tatsu was announced on November 17, 2005, after parts began arriving at Six Flags Magic Mountain, and designs along with trademark filings and building permits were found in public records. This is often how many enthusiasts find leaks and park information, as all parks require a permit to construct, and this information is published by the city where each park is located. Construction of Tatsu began in 2005 and ended in late 2006. Tatsu costed roughly $21 million and was designed by world-renowned German manufacturer Bolger and Mobular and manufactured by Claremont Steel Fabricators in Batavia, Ohio. During Tatsu's construction, the revolution was closed and parts of the revolution were physically removed and buried to assist in the construction process until the ride was done A section of the ride passes over the revolution. Roaring Rapids was closed as well as necessary footers and supports for the lift needed to be placed right outside Roaring Rapids. A Discovery Channel documentary covered much of the construction process where the crew faced numerous challenges and setbacks due to the ride's gargantuan size and location such as concrete removal, electronics being damaged in transit, and faulty wiring ultimately led to separate delays. Tatsu along with the revolution opened to the public on May 13, 2006 to rave reviews due to the ride's sheer intensity. Tatsu opened as the tallest, fastest, and longest flying coaster and still holds two of these records to this day. The station is a dual loading system to allow for larger capacity but is often underutilized. The ride is home to three steel and fiberglass trains, each holding 32 riders, eight rows of four across. But at any given time, only two trains will operate to allow for one to be used as a spare or be in maintenance rotation. With track overhead, similar to that of embroidered coasters, guests enter the row using a floor with phallus in it and pull down slightly modified over-the-shoulder restraint vests that use a pin to lock into one of multiple holes to adjust to the rider. In addition to the OSTRs, the over-shoulder restraint, a pair of ankle restraints are used to keep the rider's legs from dangling and are closed in a butterfly fashion when the OSTR is closed. Wiring for each row runs up the back of each seat row panel and over with tension relief at the tip of every row's fiberglass shell. Each car computer located under a shell communicates through a series of bus bars mounted on the side with the main right computer and are monitored by operation booth supervisors who are located in the middle of the two stations for maximum visibility of each train. Bus bars are doubled up for reliability and redundancy. When all restraints are checked in Greenland, the seats flip back and up 90 degrees to place riders in the flying position using a cantilever mechanism bolted to the side of the train's chassis and hinged to the back of each row on each side. A pair of hidden pins locks each car into place for the remainder of the ride. At the bottom of the cantilever is a midway hinge that is then connected to the seat back panel. At the top of the cantilever is a small standard B&M wheel that runs along a duct and is forced down allowing for the torque to pull riders up from beneath. Though they move a bit, the midway hinge and difference in location of the main joints allows for higher definition movement of the seats. The horizontal ducts, beveled on each side, are welded to vertical linear guides. The linear guide carriages are locked into rotating counterweights at the end of another midway hinge, which are then fed into helical warm gearbox, which is then attached to medium sized motors. It's quite a complicated mechanism, but the result is fairly simple. The cars are then locked in position, releasing pressure from the system. The train is then dispatched at the track switch is properly adjusted. A track switch is a short bit of track that is designed to have one pivot or slide axis and provide the ability for either side to have a path to the lift. It's very similar to the basic principle of a road intersection, where only one side can move at a time. This track switch completes that road. Tatsu's track switch is a rotating switch that contains forms and completes the second half of an S-curve. With a motor located in the middle, the track is curved at the end and allows it to pivot freely without obstruction. Once it rotates into the proper direction, it locks into place with a pin that hits a sensor located on the other side of the socket hole.
Moving on to the lift hill, the chain housing is slightly different than traditional chain lifts made by B&M. Like with the chassis, the lift is remarkably similar to that of an inverted coaster. Horizontally mounted drive tires propel the train using the spine, also used for braking, to the base of the lift. The lift motor itself is affixed to the bottom portion of the lift, but above the track. The cover prevents any oil from dripping from the lift's bottom gear, and the chain dog is engaged a short way up the hill. The anti-rollback dog begins to engage far earlier as you can see the teeth start long before the chain as the drive tires move the train just a bit up the lift. In the event of an evacuation, a silver maintenance platform that rests at the bottom of the lift can be driven on a separate geared track located to the left and right sides of the main track. Riders can then be lowered and released carefully by operators using a restraint release lever on the bottom of each car behind each rider. The rest of the ride is very intense as the train curves to the right down a 111 foot drop where it reaches its maximum speed of 62 miles per hour. The drop is then followed by an upward right turn into a 103 foot corkscrew to the right. That corkscrew then leads the train into a 135 degree sweeping turn and into a 96 foot zero gravity roll to the left. Then the train passes through one of the most iconic elements, the 84 foot horseshoe turn. After the turn and a large sweeping overbank, the train traverses into a signature B&M flying coaster inversion, the pretzel loop. It's quite an odd inversion, but pulls intense g-forces at the bottom, up to 4.5 g's, concentrated on the rider's chest. The inversion rises up a bit and then descends downward, as if the train did a front flip. The pretzel loop, as stated, has become a staple of flying coasters, and Tattoo's record-holding 120-foot foot pretzel loop is no exception. With speed and intense force located at the bottom, a trim bag, often scored by enthusiasts, regulates the varying speed of each train. But wait, how could an initial drop of 111 feet allow for a 124-foot pretzel loop? The trick is that the pretzel loop can be as deep as the park wants, as it adds to the kinetic energy. Since it is a downward inversion, its depth is next to unlimited, but the train must be able to make it back to the station's altitude unless there is a second left. After the intense and dominant pretzel loop, the train passes through the final inversion, a 77-foot inline twist, where the track and inversion are articulated around a straight line in relation to the track, and not the riders, like a heart line roll. The final element of Tatsu is a 135-foot fan turn and is often included in many guest park photos, as it is one of the most visible elements from the plaza. After the fan turn, the mid-course brake run comes in with air brakes to slow down the train, after which the train makes a small dip and left turn into the final brake run. Although this mid-course brake run seems unnecessary, the standard block system requires that the train previously on the track enter a new block before the next train can enter the lift. This is standard block procedure on all coasters with more than one train. There must be double the number of block sections, or more, than trains to run. Overall, the heights of the elements do not do Tatsu justice, as these numbers are essentially meaningless when you consider that Tatsu is a terrain coaster whose 170-foot lift is perched on a 100-foot hill. This allows for 270 feet of range to use, and use it Tatsu does, as the actual elevation change from the top of the lift, the highest point, to the bottom of the pretzel loop, the lowest point on the course, is 263 feet. The entire ride, of course, is monitored by miles of cable sensors and computers that track the progress, behavior, and location of each train. They also monitor elements inside the ride, such as the lift motor, air brakes, and block sensors. Without all the heavy technology behind Tatsu and the hard work of many, Tatsu would not be structurally possible, economically possible, or safe. That said,
I hope you've enjoyed this format of explaining how different rides work from a technical standpoint. I wanted to create something that would combine a sense of elegance and education to captivate you and provide you with a better understanding and appreciation for how these rides work. If you would like me to explain your favorite ride, please comment below or help me decide which ride I should cover next. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask them below in the comment section. This channel is about providing the highest quality content I can deliver, and each of these videos requires intense research and scripting, so I would greatly appreciate you telling your friends and family about us, and like, comment, and subscribe to keep these videos going and help support this channel. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.